In this episode, we're going to be looking at building a very simple, very basic image and container from your own Docker file. Now I've gone ahead and pulled up the Docker file reference page here. And if you're looking for it, just do a quick search for Docker file. It's typically the first thing that pulls up, click on that, and it pulls up the Docker file reference pretty quickly. Now there's a lot of really good information inside of this Docker file reference. It'll tell you everything that you could possibly want to know about all of the different commands that you can put into your Docker file. And unfortunately, it will tell you everything that you really need to know about putting things into your Docker file, which means there is quite frankly an overwhelming amount of information at times. When you're just getting started, this reference is not really the best place to go. So I want to simplify things for you. We're going to build the most simple, smallest possible image that we can from the two commands that we need in order to do that. And that's going to be the from command as well as the cmd command or command, you know. So let's get started with this real quick. I'm going to drop over to the command line and I've got an empty folder at this point and I'm going to touch a docker file and I'm going to use a capital D with this because the docker build command is case sensitive when it looks for docker file with capital D. Yes, you can specify any other file name that you want. It doesn't even have to be a dot docker file. It could just be any random name like Batman or George or whatever you want it to be. But it's easier if you go ahead and use the capital D docker file. After I've done that, I'll open up my editor and we'll start looking at what goes into this particular file. Now, as I've said a few times before, most Docker images and containers have a base Linux installation inside of them. And by most, I really mean like 98, 99 out of 100 times. The, uh, yeah, it, it is possible for you to build a Docker image without a base Linux installation, but you're talking about C++ and other really low-level compilers in order to get down into almost an operating system level. Sure, you could do it, and there are some people that do do it. I mean, who's building the Linux distributions after all? But it's not something that you generally want to do. Most of the time, you want to start with a base Linux installation. And for that, I prefer to use Alpine Linux most of the time because it's incredibly small. It's like five megs or less to get an Alpine Linux install up and running inside of Docker versus Ubuntu can be a couple of hundred megs and it can grow really fast once you start adding in a lot more complicated pieces and parts. Now, when we get to a full Node.js build later on, yeah, it's going to be a pretty hefty sized image because of everything that we need. But to start with, we're going to go with Alpine Linux and we're going to create a very basic installation with a simple command. Now, as I mentioned previously, we're going to use two commands inside of this Docker file. We're going to use from and we're going to specify Alpine Linux as the from command. This from, what it really does is it specifies the base image from which you are building your Docker file and your new image. Now, Alpine is an existing image inside of the official Docker Hub. If I look up Docker Alpine, we will see that there is an Alpine Linux repository on the official Docker Hub website. We don't have to download it in advance or anything. We could just specify from Alpine and we're good to go. Now, aside from the from command, there's one other thing that you need, and that is the CMD command or command command, really. And this is going to be an array that specifies the command and any parameters that we want to execute. If you've done any kind of shell scripting from Node.js or other languages, you're probably familiar with having to specify each individual part, each parameter, as an individual part of an array. And that's kind of what's happening here. So to start with, let's go ahead and run echo hello world. This is going to be the most basic and simple Docker image and container that we could possibly imagine. I'm going to save that. I'm going to head back to my command line and we're going to build this. So we're going to say docker build. Now the docker build command needs at least one parameter and that is the folder from which to build. So I'm going to say docker build dot because the docker file is in my current folder. Now once I run that, you'll see a couple of different things happen. You'll see step one from Alpine. I've already got Alpine Linux installed. 
if you don't have it installed, it will go through a download process for that base image. But once it's gone through that step one, it's going to create a temporary image inside of our Docker configuration. And then it's going to move on to the next line of our Docker file, which is the command echo hello world. Now we've got another Docker image created and it's got an output here. That's the last part of our Docker file. So it's removing this previous intermediate container that it had created. And it's telling us that we have successfully built this container with this particular ID. Now, if you're used to the pull command with named images that we've seen previously, that's great. It's good to be able to do that. But right now we don't have a named image. We just have the image ID. And you can use image IDs for any image that you want. Even if you have a named image, you could go ahead and specify the ID and it would still work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste this. I'll just copy this and I'll say docker run. I'll give this a name, dash dash name. We'll call this test and we'll paste in the image ID. And if you think back to the previous episodes, you'll remember that the docker run command will turn an image into a container. So let's see what happens when we run this. Ah, oops, I've already got one called test. Let me remove that real quick. Docker RM test. And I will rebuild like this. Ooh, echo hello world does not exist because I made a mistake in locating the executable. Here I was telling you about specifying an array with the command and parameters, and I totally messed that up. Okay, I'm gonna run echo hello world. Let's rebuild this container. I'm going to docker rm test again, and I will rerun docker build dot. Now I will docker run dash dash name, paste in the ID, dash dash name test, sorry about that, paste in the ID, and there we have it. We have hello world as an output. We've built our very first docker image and container. And how incredibly useless was that? I mean, it's your typical hello world, right? Not exactly the most useful thing in the world. So let's, let's add a little more to this. Let's take what we just did and let's do something a little more with it. Let's, let's take that hello world echo out of the Docker container and into a script file that we're going to put into the container. And this, this will start showing us a little more of what Docker can actually do. So instead of saying command echo hello world like I did here, I'm going to edit a script.sh. And this is a terrible name, I know, but it doesn't really matter. Once I've got a script.sh file here, I'm just going to say hello world from a script file. Now again, not the most useful command ever, but I also uh, do need to remember that I need the hash bang. So hash bang slash bin slash sh, that way it knows it's a shell command. Also, once I have that in place, I need to make this executable. So I will run chmod plus x on the current file. That will make the file executable. There we see in vim. All right, so now I've got a good script.sh file. And I want to copy this file into my Docker image and container so that it can be executed. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my Docker file. And I'm going to use a new command. I'm going to use copy. And we're going to say copy script.sh to slash script.sh. Now this slash script.sh, this is the destination within the Docker image or container itself. So once I have the image built, it will contain a file called script.sh at this location, at the slash location inside of the Alpine Linux box. Now, if you want to put this inside of a subdirectory, you certainly can, and we'll be doing that later on, especially with our node images and containers that we're building. But for now, I'm just gonna put this on the root. Once we have that file copied in, I'm gonna, again, use the cmd command, and I'm going to add my square brackets, and I'm going to say slash script.sh. Now, I don't really need any parameters at this point, so I'll go ahead and save that, and we'll rerun that process I showed you earlier. I'm going to docker rm test, docker build, and here in the build output, we can see step two is now copying script.sh to this location. We created an intermediate container at this point. We're running the cmd command to say script.sh is where we're starting, running the command when we actually run the container. And then we have successfully built this image ID. So now I'm going to do docker run dash dash name test, specify the image ID, run that. And again, we get the hello world output. 
Well, it's, you know, a little more interesting because we're actually doing something inside of the Docker container. We're doing something with the file system. But it's not a great example of a Docker image or container because it just spits out that hello world and it, then it exits. Not the most useful thing in the world. So let's do something a little different than this still. Let's change this script.sh. Instead of just doing the echo hello world, let's run the top command. Now, if you're not familiar with the top command in the Linux world, in bash world, you can run top and it'll give you system information about the processes that are currently running in your system. Typically, you hit command C or control C and it will exit out of the top command. So I've added top to my script here. I'm going to rerun that little process of deleting and rebuilding. And the output of this pretty much looks the same. We've only modified the script.sh. We haven't modified anything else. I'm going to rerun the, the run command, but I'm going to change the ID so I get the right image to run from. And in this case, we have the top command running inside of the container, which is great. We've got something uh, you know that theoretically is more useful. It's, it's an actual running process inside of the system. And there's something very important that you're gonna see inside of this top command. And that's this first line item right here. That's this PID1. And if you look, PID1 is set to the script.sh. This is important because PID1 inside of a Docker container is the process that Docker uses to determine when it should exit. When PID1 exits, the entire Docker container exits. So when you have a Docker container that you're building, an image and a container that you're running from that image, you need to know that the very first thing that starts up inside of your container should be PID1, and the thing that runs the entire container will have that PID, and once this process exits, you're going to exit the entire container. It's a very important thing to note. Now, I said a moment ago that typically you hit Command C or Control C to exit out of the, the top command in order to exit the shell, and you would expect that hitting Control C or Command C would exit the top shell, which would then exit the entire container. Except there's a small problem. I'm hitting Command C and it's not working. Hitting Control C here and it's not working. So there's another thing you need to know about PID1 in the Linux world. And that is that the PID1 won't exit when you press Control C. It's a special Linux process ID that ignores several of those signals. The good news is there is a way to get out of this. I'm going to open up another tab and I'm going to say docker stop test and it's going to shut down the actual docker image for me. It's going to forcibly exit the top command and everything is pretty much good to go once that is done. So that we can see that the stop command exited and we're out of the container on this screen. If I run docker ps, we don't have any containers running at this point in time. So that's pretty much it for this episode. That is a very basic Docker file with the build process using Docker build and then running our image using the image ID to create our container. I know it's not the most useful thing in the world in terms of seeing an actual application run, but this will give you a good idea of how to start writing your own Docker files, how to get files from your local file system into the Docker container so that they can actually do some things. Stay tuned for some upcoming episodes, though, where we look at some more advanced features, starting with the ability to actually use Command-C or Control-C inside of that top command by introducing a script loader or running process to our command right here. We're also going to be looking at the difference between entry point and command inside of our Docker file, which is something that, frankly, confused me for a little while. So those will be in a couple of upcoming episodes. Thanks for watching this episode, and happy doctoring.